many people are mad at God? Because they've been taught that God's in control. It's not even in the Bible. If you belong to Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to his promise. And his promise was great wealth. So you gotta be, you gotta be really settled, unequivocally saying God wants me healthy. Amen. God wants me prosperous. Third John 2 says, Beloved, I pray that you might prosper in every way and that your body might keep well, even as I know your soul prospers and keeps well. So we see right there that God wants us to be healthy. Can everybody say, God wants me to be healthy? This is not a theological statement. This is not a doctrinal statement. It's not a statement of teaching. It's not a didactic, not a teaching statement. It's simply a common greeting to a letter. On the contrary, it says that in this Christian life, we can expect to experience tribulation, suffering, and pain. Every single one of us has sin in our life. Right. I'm not perfect. I have not repented of all my sins. You've not repented of all your sins, okay? Not, and I'm not going to get up here and be all pompous and arrogant and prideful. Well, when I got saved, God took away my desire for X, Y, and Z. And if you still desire that stuff, then you better check your salvation. So it's not a sin in your church to have an abortion? Um, that's the kind of conversation we would have finding out your story, where you're from, what Work you believe. Through it. Like, talk yeah, about I mean, God's the judge. People have to live to their own conviction. I'm going higher. I want to sit with somebody and say, where do you believe? You either believe in Christ or you don't. If you believe in Christ, you are, you are going to heaven. And if you don't, no matter what you've done in your life, yeah. you ain't. Yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, there's probably a, a balance between, I believe you have to know Christ, but I think that if you know Christ, if you're a believer in God, you're going to have some good work. I Give us some men who know the truth and who will stand with Athanasius and Polycarp and Calvin and Luther and Whitfield and Edwards and who will declare from the housetops that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The second song. You're my beloved son. Today I have begotten you. Acts 13 tells us that that phrase from the Father, today I have begotten you, is in reference to the resurrection. So he was born through Mary, the virgin, and then he was born again, and then he was born again, and then he was born again, born again, born again, in resurrection. One thing that even the Son of God can't do, even Jesus cannot override your unbelief. I'm going to say something going to knock your lights off. God has the power to take life, but he can't. he got the power to do it, but he won't. He's bound. He can't. He says death and life is in the power of whose tongue? Yours. You ready for this? You want something to knock your lights off? You choose when you live. You choose when you die. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. Not God's. Now he's got the power. But he will not exercise that because you are a speaking spirit. Now, I got to hit this thing real hard in the very beginning because I ain't got time to go through all this. But I'm going to say to you right now, you are God's, little g. You are God's because you came from God and you are God. You're not just human. The only human part about you is this physical body that you live in. The real me is just like God. The real me is just like God. Blasphemy. Absolute blasphemy. ...is going to do amazing damage to the kingdom of God. So I'm excited about that. And I can...